Hi, I'm Jameson Newlander, Alan Frog from The Lost Boys, and you're watching the Frog Brothers Podcast. Let me get them! It's refreshment time, folks. I'm just gonna go watch a movie. Do you like scary movies? I don't watch movies. I have to return some videotapes. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. I don't need a TV. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. Over 1,600 titles, each for rent at just $2 the first night, and only a... Finish it. I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention, they show shows, right? It's a laser disc. Okay, one channels 18, 24, 63, 1987, and one Welcome to the Fog Brothers Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Alec. Hello, kids, and welcome to episode 72 of the Frog Brothers Podcast, the real episode 72. I realized last week I said 72, when it was really 71. If you were confused, so was I. Uh, yeah. Not that most people give a fuck, but here we go. They probably weren't noticing. Uh, so yeah, it was a pretty been last a, few fucking crazy weeks. Been a wild week for sure. So much toy hunting, like I feel like we weren't collecting anything for a while. Uh, and now it's like a whole... I wasn't prepared. Obsession. Uh, watch the money fly away. Um, as YHS would say, I def I definitely barged this week. Yes. Um, I also barged in pre-orders. Now, I haven't spent that money yet, but it's still... You may as well have, because yeah. it's gone. It's gone away. I mean, yeah, some of it's gone. Should be the first of next month. Yes. We should be By having a end. going away party for your money, because it's, uh, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, what? I don't, I don't even want to estimate. I can't even do it. It scares me. Let's not do it. All right, moving on. We yeah. bought a lot of toys. We pre-ordered um, all the new Plasma Series figures. Including well the Glow Series that I hadn't pre-ordered yet. Me neither, but I saw them still up for pre-order, and I was like, you know what? I'm never going to get Ecto Glows now because they cost so goddamn much. Alec convinced me. He's like, you know, I want to be a completist with the Plasma Series. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. You've got a point. Yeah. How can I argue with logic and reasoning? It was hard, but it had to be done. You were hard, too? Oh, I was definitely <laughs> hard. But once I hit complete order or whatever, I definitely went limp. <laughs> uh, terrible. Um, so much awesomeness after that Ghostbusters trailer released. It's just been a toy hunt frenzy for everything. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is it's not just Ghostbusters. Uh, they've got a new wave of... Jurassic Park stuff that's all coming out and hitting in a variety of the Legacy Collection and the Amber Collection. I picked up the Amber Collection, John Hammond and Ellie Sattler, um, and those are out now. The last wave that was easy to find was it was Ian Malcolm and John Arnold that were uh, um, easy to find at the at the time, and now Mr. Arnold's gone clearance in a lot of places. So, huh. And then what'd you get? Didn't you get the uh, Tim and the T-Rex truck? Yeah, Tim and the T-Rex, the sequel to Tammy and the T-Rex. That, exactly. Uh, it's, it's unknown, but hey, it exists. Exactly. Um, also, the mini puffs we got this week. Yes. Um, that's a whole thing. Those things are fucking messy. A lot of people complain how they're messier than they actually are, though, because literally I could take some out right now if I wanted to and put it on anything in this room, including this board, which I won't do, but then take it right off, too. Because it's actually, it l seems messier than it is, but once you realize... The um, only thing that I hated about it was it seemed like you wasted a lot because of the plastic wrapping inside. Well, no, because as if you watched our video, you can see that you can get it all off of there. Yeah. Literally in seconds. Yes, if you spend the time to do that. Now, I had a four-year-old made a lot easier with me who did not have the patience for that. Yeah, I can't imagine that hell. <laughs> So, and he went, even he was like, this is so yucky, is what I think is what he said. It was hilarious. But he loved the mini puffs once we got him out. Why am I drippings with goo? Pretty much. And then you uh, made some really great art and put it on the internet with the uh, uh, Stay Puffed Marshmallow yes. Man. Stay Puffed Marshmallow Dong. Um, yeah. Stay Puffed. He was very puffed. Indeed. Puffed up in the genitalia. Dick was longer than his legs. 
<laughs> Fucking, <laughs> you got a wheelbarrow or something? A little uh, Aqua Teen throwback for you kids out there. A little Carl. Yep. Uh, I missed that show. I finally got to Stay Puff today, which is the last thing I was missing. And I also found a... Uh, I'm going to go with an Alec there and give us one of those to listen to and enjoy. G.I. Booger. Got a uh, Christine die-cast car, so that'll go great with the other collection. Put it over there with the other ones, Greaseball. Yeah. It's just so exciting to see all this stuff hitting shelves, and there's just so many things. And I know there's a bunch of people that are into He-Man and wrestling and all that, and I don't even look at that stuff. Yeah, I don't. I, I look at the He-Man stuff now because I think that the packaging is the most alluring part of it. And some of the figures are okay looking in design, but like they still look a little goofy to me. Like yeah. He-Man always looked goofy to me as a kid, and I don't know if that's because I grew up in the 90s, but like it just looked go- like I always looked at his fucking haircut and was like, this guy is not a hero. <laughs> this guy works uh, at a fucking as a janitor because he gets state help to find a job. <laughs> <laughs> like that's. That's yeah. what that haircut does. I don't know. I never got to He-Man as a kid either. So like the packaging now and the new, um, the newer stuff from the new series looks more interesting than the old stuff. But I'm still eh, yeah. I'm well, not collecting I, that. Once so. I have Netflix again, I'm gonna watch the Revelation series just because I want to hear all those voice actors. I want to hear Jason Mewes in a fucking He-Man show. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Clerks three started filming officially today. Yes. Today was Did day one. Did you see one. how fucking old Elias looks now? Jesus, he was yeah. twenty four or five when they filmed the first one, and now he's like forty. So it's like. Oh my god, that's a man, not a child now. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize it was him at first. I was like, who's this other guy? Holy shit. And apparently, um, I would say he's probably someone who also works there at the store as introduced as a new character. Her her uh, Harley Quinn Smith's boyfriend, uh, Austin something. I can't remember his last name. Yeah, he's going to... Yeah, I saw him on He's set. an actor too, but no, he was in the scary stories to tell in the dark movie. Mm-hmm. No, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. That's pretty awesome to see that Kevin's got good projects coming along. So Yeah, I'm stoked for Clerks 3. Um, a lot of people didn't like Jay and Silent Bob reboot, but, um, you know, it wasn't uh, wasn't his best movie, but neither was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. No. So Those movies are very specific in that. They lack some of the other character depth that you'd get out of his other films. But he so. tried to put some character depth in there, but the problem is that People wanted more of dick, so you're and, just, dick and fart and stoner jokes out of him. And there are still those in there, but... Yeah. Just uh, finding just, that balance. But I think this is the right Clerks 3, right? You know, we, you know, we've heard yeah. him talk about Clerks 3 for a long time, but much like Ghostbusters 3, I think we're finally getting the right version to carry that story on. It actually works and makes sense. And death and near-death experiences and all that can really change people's perspective. So I think uh, this is going to be a pretty good movie. Justin's getting spooky. Talking about death. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you two, uh, you two, they got uh, penis bones. So, um, yeah. If you haven't uh, checked out all, all a bunch of, a uh, bunch of our, I'm stoned as fuck, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Check out surprise, a bunch of surprise. our uh, YouTube videos about the new Ghostbuster stuff. Justin reviewed the Hallmark ornament. I reviewed this proton pack in a very short video, which I find very funny. I, I, did you see the editing in that one? Yeah. I found it funny because it's like a lot of people were so pissed at it, so I kind of just... He trolled a little bit. Made a fuck you video to those people, basically. Here's my review. Fuck you, asshole. No, and it's you don't want to be a complete asshole and talk shit on it because I get everyone's got a different budget, right? And there's a lot of people that talk shit on spirit proton packs and that whole thing, like... The piece of that, though, that I found interesting was that people are already, like, fucking ripping on the M.O.D. Um, uh, Neutrona wand that's for the kids. It's the electronic light and sound one. And everyone's like, this thing sucks because of this. I'm like, it's for a child. It's not for a fucking grown man. If you wanted the grown man... It is a child's plaything! If you wanted the grown man version, you should have brought the Plasma Series Spangler one because that's what was made for you. This was made for my kid. And you know who loved all this stuff? My kids. They're very excited to have something with lights and I think and it's dope as hell, it. too. Yeah. They love it all it is. And then there's people speculating on other stuff about the wands. And it's like, oh, my God, people. Mm-hmm. The amount of negativity. It's like, go swim in your river of slime. 
Oh, otherwise, we're going to cover you with mood slime because you need to have an attitude change. I got some mood slime for you. I know you do. That's what I'm telling them. You better watch out. Alex coming for you. Santa Claus is coming on the town. Um, yeah, I'm stoned as hell, guys. Uh, what are we What are we doing uh, today? Well, we're talking about a... Are we talking about a movie first, or are we going to talk about something else? Because we're only talk... talking about one movie. We're, we're kind of switching up formats a little bit and seeing how it's going to go if we talk about one movie a week versus uh, two every podcast, just to allow for more content on YouTube. And really to make the podcast a little more digestible as far as us being able to break the movie down a little bit more depth. Yeah. Which I so, didn't take any more notes on it, but hopefully we'll still be able to talk long enough about it. I've seen it. this movie so many times, it's one of those I didn't take anything for notes. I have seen it many times. So, let's jump into the movie. The movie. Right. The movie. Please. You know what I just watched? Me pulling a can off some morons' fist. Return of the Jedi. Did you see Alien? When that uh, creature was in that guy's stomach? <sighs> Oh my god! You ever seen that really old movie? Uh, Empire Strikes Back? Jesus, Tony, welcome to Retro Release Reviews. Oh, it's in my eye. <laughs> Alec is really high because he's just fucking being himself here, not even thinking about what he's hey. doing. How's so we're talking about the movie Sandlot. The Sandlot from 1993. And uh, although I am not petting Hercules, I'm petting Booger. Starring Dennis Theory. Mm hmm. <laughs> He's actually pretty good in that, though. No, it's funny. Because you're like, what? Um, yeah, so... This is one of those classic all-American summer coming-of-age stories, and it just holds up pretty well. There's a few things in here that I'll get to that are fucking cringeworthy, I believe, but... Yeah, alert. Alert. But, uh... Well, I guess let's start off. It, it kind of... It has a narration that reminds me of Stand By Me, and that's actually... The movie reminds me a lot of Stand By Me in general, which yes. we'll get to the various different aspects about that. But the narration is for, is one thing because it's like this nostalgic look back at your childhood about like yeah the best fucking time you had with your friends where you came of age. Yeah, it's almost like the show The Wonder Years where there's some of that on there as well, you know. So I think yeah. that kind of works. Um, the kid who played uh, Squints is in um, Freaks and Geeks. And as you know, I'm a big Freaks and Geeks and Paul Feig fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he played Alan White in nine episodes. He's the bully of uh, uh, the the geeks, basically. Yeah. So. No, so this movie is just one of those that just stays with you. There's so many great moments in it. Like the whole s'more scene and you're killing me smalls. Like, you, you know, everyone knows that you're killing me smalls just from that. Yeah. And it's generational, too. It's like there's probably... A 20-year age gap of anyone that's seen this movie can, like, quote that line and know exactly what it's from and know what it means. So Most it's... people have fond memories of this movie. This is one of those movies you can put on and everybody would be like, okay, I'll watch this. Yeah, you're not going to have a lot of people be like, this movie sucks, turn it off. Now, the sequels, and I did subject myself to viewing them last summer. You did? <sighs> you only live once. You sick fuck. I know. I was <laughs> fucking torturing myself. It's in the summertime. I had to do it when it was nice and summery out. Otherwise, if I'd done something like that in the winter, I'd have been depressed and... Uh, been in a bad spot. Yeah, that sounds pretty awful. Yeah, um, they're bad. Yeah, like I said, though, this is one of those movies, like, growing up, though, if you were watching TV and it was, like, on, no matter what point of the movie it was on, you were like, all right, I'm gonna watch this, too. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Yeah, it was one of those movies we didn't own as kids, but it was on TV enough that, yeah, you watched it every time it came on because it just resonates with you. Yeah. Um, badass treehouse in this, too. The tree, uh, the whole fucking kids, like, they got their own sandlot to play baseball in. They got the treehouse there. They're basically just, like, living their best life with little to no adult supervision. Yeah. And it's clearly, like, a small town vibe. This reminds me of the town our uh, great-grandparents lived in in Iowa. It's, like, such a small town. There's, like, a an old an old field kind of over there near their house that was mm -hmm. like that as well. And, like, the pool was close enough you could walk to. And, like, you could get all around town, no problem. Yeah. Um... So, basically, Smalls moves to town. At the end of fifth grade, man. Which is uh, kind of shitty, but hey. He's like, I didn't have any friends within a thousand miles. You're like, dude, that sucks right before summer. And his fucking hat it just makes me laugh. Yeah. Because well, I guess it's it's one of those old style of hats things, and it's more of a joke for people who are older watching this to yes. see it. But like, still, 
it looks goofy as hell. It, like, sticks off so goddamn far off his head. Yeah, like, the bill of that hat is fucking looks like a bird beak. And you're like, you know that's why they call it a bill. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, it has a fair amount of a little bit of real stuff and then comedy. Like, just switching back and forth throughout the whole thing. Yeah, it's it it's paced very well. The editing on this, I would say, is amazing. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, the plot doesn't even kick in for, like, I don't know, 40, 50, fucking 50 minutes, it feels like. It's all character development at the beginning, and then you finally get to, like, what the fuck's actually going on. But, um... The biggest pickle of our entire lives. Well, like, Benny kind of takes Smalls under his wing. He's yeah, like, he sees that he's the new kid, and, like, there's potential, and they're always looking for that ninth ball player. Yeah. Always looking for that ninth ball player. Well, uh, <laughs> we're talking about children, you sick bastard. You sick bastard. I was thinking about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hercules was 199. They call him years. the beast. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till they get a load of me. You saw how foamy his mouth was. Wait till he gets a load of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is a fucked up episode. So many people are turning this off. Imagine somebody listening to this as their first episode, and we're what... How far into this episode? Like 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And 16 minutes, and they're like, this guy's talking about fucking, fucking a rails. dog. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> if Jesus. Bob Saget can do it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make you my can... apology now. Yes. Um, I apologize. It was a sick joke because I'm a sick human, and uh, that's all I have to say about that. That's fine. I mean, we've all seen that Bob Saget stand-up special where he's talking about his dog. Basically, this is a stand-up routine. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, it's Bob Saget's fault. Covered under parody You think law. you're wholesome, and then next thing you know, <laughs> the, the shit coming out of your mouth is pretty foul. I hope nobody <laughs> listened to this podcast with their children in the car. Uh, they're like, they're coming to the Sandlot. You want to hear about the Sandlot? Yeah, I love no. the Sandlot. If you know us, you don't <laughs> want to hear us in, talking in front of your kids. Okay, well, you know what? Actually, I don't feel so bad, because you know what? South Park has that whole bit about the dog that you may have not seen when um, he's like, oh, you want to see the dog... Uh, uh, milk the dog and then he's like what he's like yeah he goes and he's petting the dog on the really fast he's like red rocket red rocket come on boy come on boy red rocket red rocket and they're like he's spending an awful lot of time with the dog <laughs> yeah and then there's the whole movie van wilder where they um abuse that dog and make him fill the donuts so <sighs> you things... suck that guy's dick <laughs> go uh... Web, go <laughs> Oh, man. 7 Up, brought to you by RC Cola. Smoke weed every day. That's how Alec gets by. Yep. Um, you know, I really, I like the, I always loved the carnival scene as a kid, and I never understood when I was real young watching this, I didn't understand what the chewing tobacco was. Oh, yeah. So I literally thought it was like the chewing gum that is oh, supposed big, to be shredded. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I want some of that gum. That always made me want that bubble gum. And actually, yeah. now that we're talking about it, I kind of want some, too. So, well, It's hilarious because, you know, you're looking at these kids that get this chewing tobacco. They steal it. They don't realize, like, you know, they're not spitting it right, and they're swallowing it and all that other shit. Yeah. <laughs> and all that tobacco in your stomach like that, yeah. And then nicotine alone would fucking make all those kids sick. So well, that's what the... I mean. Like, they, they instantly get super fucking buzzed and, like, sick on it, clearly. You can tell. And it's like, oh, shit. And, like, you look back at other movies that have done something similar. I think it's Problem Child 2, maybe. Where they have something, there's a problem child, problem child too, where there's like a similar kind of a problem child too. Yeah, and it's like, but I was also gonna say, Stand by Me has that yes, puke scene too. Exactly. And the Stand by Me one's not really that bad, like when you look at it, because it's just pie, so it's basically just pie filling they're throwing on everybody. Oh it's man, it's down. still wrong. Makes uh, me, I can it, smell it, it when I watch that scene. The castor oil is like the part that makes me sick, is like when he drinks all that castor oil, they like oh, make God, himself right, sick. Make me the... sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, one, that wasn't your normal burp. That was one of those guttural burps. It's like, I was feeling oh, like it's, no. it's churning things. It's churning butter. <laughs> <laughs> Wilhelm, scream. Yeah, I like to have that on command. Like I'm George Lucas or some shit. Yeah. So I gotta put this. Uh, that is one of the great movie. scenes in there. Yeah, uh, I'm here to. I'm, I'm George Lucas, and I'm uh, here today to talk about uh, the Sandlot. Hmm. Uh, Jar Jar Binks. We were originally gonna put him in uh, the Sandlot, but I decided that he wouldn't really do well in a, a desert climate. So uh, I, I need to work on a better George Lucas impression. But uh, it always seems like he's down here. Yeah, he's very calm and collected usually. Um. 
Yeah, so the carnival scene, that that's great. I love how they're just puking on other people, too, and shit. That's what's great. Um, it didn't gross me out as a kid, but I found it fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Now it, it grosses me out. Well, some of these do a good job of not making them, like, completely, like, obnoxiously chunky. So, like, when you're watching, you're just like, huh. Because yeah. I made the mistake earlier when I was watching this. You're, like, and eating a bowl of cereal or something? After work, I was chew- I was eating some Oreos, and I was like, it's a really ro- bad time to grab some Oreos. They're about to vomit everywhere. <laughs> Oh, well. But you know we're what? doing it. <laughs> fucking committed. <laughs> oh, sweet. You just, you just get through it. Mm. After you've had kids that have, like, burped and shit and pissed all over you, you're just like, whatever. Yeah. After um, you feel like you've spent a day or two with R. Kelly, nothing bothers you. It's funny that you, the reason you were like, oh, you know what? There, we should cover Sandlot this week because it's been really hot out. And, like, the last two days, it's been actually fairly nice. Oh, today was fucking beautiful besides, like, that smoky haze outside yeah i was like what are we on is this i saw ozone alert or something the other day too air quality alerts yeah so I said something about ozone there's so many great moments in this movie like the whole treehouse that first like sleepover in the treehouse where they're telling the stories i put my hand on a, no not that treehouse <laughs> yes exactly that's a, none of their Ooh, i don't know if we can have a top five treehouses because i can only name my top two <laughs> but jack Oh, shit. Robin Williams movie, yeah. that treehouse they have in there. there. Yeah. There's a couple others. Stand By Me, they have a treehouse. I mean... Oh, and Monster Squad does too. Okay, I could think of five. But we pretty much just did. So. There you go. There was our top that five. That was our top five treehouses and movies. <laughs> 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 That's what that looks like. <laughs> pretty much. So if yours are the same, just let us know. If we've left anything off the list, you know where to find us. Mm-hmm. I will crush your bones into dust! I don't even know why I played that one. I thought I, I was <laughs> trying to hit, hit the something. wrong button. I, I think so, but hey, <laughs> it's always fun to hear. I That's like Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Scooby. Where are you? So, the whole treehouse scene where they're watching the dog and telling the story, and I love the flashback. Well, the, the fireworks. Oh, is that less later anyway? Isn't it? Yes, actually. The fireworks is, is a good scene too, though, where they're playing baseball at night because the fireworks. Yeah, I just. I took notes in a weird way, so, but, well, first they're playing baseball, and, you know, mm-hmm. they keep losing their fucking balls, right? Yeah, well, over the fence, yeah. And so, he's like, I got a ball, Smalls. Yeah. This fucking dumbass. This dumb bastard. You dumb bastard. Well, they already ridicule him, and, like, he tries to fight it, and, you know. Oh, man. Hey, Bruce, I thought you said the great Bambi. That wimpy deer? And you're like, yeah, that wimpy deer. Fucking A, man. Pretty yeah, much. so he, he brings the Babe Ruth signed autograph ball from his dad, his stepdad's room. And his stepdad's convenient. And he doesn't even know who Babe Ruth is. He doesn't really know. He knows that it's autographed, so yeah. I don't know why he's being a moron. By some girl named Baby, Baby Ruth, Babe Ruth. And it's the kid, uh, Patrick something from uh, Sign Law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's really good in this. He has a good shirt in Son-in-Law that I want to get uh, that says, Seduce Me, Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's yeah he's a good... he's a, He was a good kid actor. I, think, actor. I don't think anybody would get the reference. They'd just think I was a pig, but it'd be funny to me. Yeah. But like, haven't you seen this? It's a fucking Polly Shore movie, you uncultured swine. Or it better yet, <laughs> I could get a picture of him better with, yet, wearing the shirt. Yeah. That'd work. That would work. This could work. It could work. Sorry, I'm random castaway quotes coming to mind. Um, now, there's a lot of good stuff in there. So that whole trio scene with the s'mores, and then I love the flashback to the dog and like the uh, puppetry animation they have for the dog. Scooby-Doo, motherfucker. I know. My voice is cracking a lot. Yeah, I love the whole scene where they're like, all right, we're going to camp out up here because that was like, when I was in like fourth grade watching this, I was like, holy shit, this is the shit. This is the dream right here. Yeah, how come I never had an unsupervised sleepover in a fucking treehouse, goddammit? Away from everyone's parents with yeah. food and goodies and probably magazines with boobies in them and shit. No, because they all said they'd seen a Playboy, but they never really had. They all lied about it. They mentioned that at the pool scene, which is pretty oh, yeah. funny. Which we all said we had. <laughs> he kissed her long and good. <laughs> yeah. Creepy. We'll get there. The Squints character, man. He's the most questionable son of a bitch in there. Squints is that one friend. He's the fucking wild card of the group. Because he's, he's fucking so full of shit. Well, he's basically Steve-O from Jackass, but in he this is. movie with kids. Yes, he is. 
and he's the one that causes most of the trouble. Yeah. The greatest part at the end of the movie is like, oh, you, someone finally bested Hercules. <laughs> he's like, why didn't you just knock on the door? And everyone like fucking hits squints, and you're like, you dumb bastard. You dumb bastard. All he had to do was knock. Um. Yeah. So the pool scene is something we should just go ahead and get out of the way. So this, this is the prob the only problematic real. Like, oh, I don't know, today's modern standards, obviously, this is a 30-year-old movie at this point, but, um, or like, what, 25, but still. Well, and then, uh, even then, it's a telling, a, it's telling a story that's like 20 years old. Right? Yeah. So. Um, either way, it is just a movie, so you can't really say, hey, this is fucked up, because it's a movie, it's actors. But the act of the character is definitely a questionable motherfucker. Well, yeah, that's the, for sure. The, the character itself is is pretty fucked up when you think about it, right? He causes all the trouble in the movie throughout the entire movie. He's also kind of an innocent kid. She did smile at him afterwards, but she also flipped out before she did that, and then supposedly later married him. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it just like kind of makes you want to talk to the writer about it. Like, what kind of fucked up shit went on in your household that you didn't address that made you write that into a movie? Because like oh, you realize shit. that most of the time when people write shit, it's not from fucking just coming out of their head of nowhere. It's a lot of that shit's something that they've either heard a story of or were influenced by or traumatized by. Right? Obviously, horror movies and shit like that are a little different. But uh, I mean, when you're writing a character like this that does behavior like that, somewhere somehow somebody taught that the writer that that was a normalized acceptable behavior yeah and like they play it up like it's real funny and i'm sure at the time the 90s everyone's like woohoo this is hilarious i thought it was hilarious when i was a kid and i'm looking back yeah. now i'm like shit yeah when i watched it i was like that's a little bit rapey but uh you know this kid's been playing it. i've been planning it all i've been planning it for years that's the creepiest part mm-hmm. <laughs> But that's about the only thing that doesn't age really well in that. I mean, and that's one of those things that they could have told that story in a little bit different way, but it yeah. does carry the story forward in it. And if you cut that out, the only thing that would change would be the ending scene where he says that he he married her and had a bunch of kids and bought the drugstore. And that's the only thing that would change. Because <laughs> beyond that, it's not really pertinent. So, yeah, he tells... Um, I guess we jumped away from the treehouse scene. Mm-hmm. But in the treehouse scene, he tells the guys about this, this the story, and it's almost like in modern times, like drunk history stole this style. Yes, of like showing the story, but someone's telling the story, and you use that audio, and the other people act to that audio and make themselves yes. sync to it. So it's like very fascinating, and it works so well, especially with a kid doing it. And he does a great job with that monologue. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, no, I mean, I understand why he was cast in that role, because he just fucking knocked it out of the park, right? Yeah. Surprised he wasn't in more stuff as a kid, as far as I know, anyway. I mean, I know he's in Freaks and Geeks, but... Yeah. Either way, obviously has the iconic... Forever. 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 Then you get the dog days of summer when they go to the pool. That, because it's well, that so scene hot. has like the dog puppet stuff too. Yeah. Like really bad puppetry. And it looks like an old. What I love about this is it's like an old 1950s monster movie. Mm hmm. That's yeah. what those things look like with the well, dog. It's clearly and shit. the types of movies that those kids would have been watching. Well, so. they later see the Wolfman in the theater mm -hmm. for. Well, they don't, but the dog tears through it. Benny sees moments of it, maybe. Yeah. He's like, oh, hey, the Wolfman. I like that. They're showing Dracula next week. The only other thing in this movie that really pisses me off is at the end of the movie when he's like, he's stealing home, he's stealing home, and you're like, fuck off with all that. No one fucking steals home in baseball, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's not like, you know, they make it out to be this big thing, and I just felt like it was an overhyped moment, so. I don't know enough about baseball to care. Well, I mean, I know how baseball works, and I know what stealing is, but I also uh, just don't, uh, you know. That moment pisses me off. I'm just going to tell you that. Well, you know what I really like is seeing them sick PF flyers come out. Mm-hmm. Makes me want to get some PF flyers. Yeah, I believe they're still around. I think you can still get some of those. They may be out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did uh, Great Outdoors yeah. that last week. Yeah, that was last week, I think. So you guys should check out that review. That was a quote Fuck. from that, if you yeah. couldn't tell. Be, watch that movie like 600 times like I have, and then maybe you would be able to recognize every infliction of dialogue, even the most casual love lines that have nothing to do with plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> What's your other favorite? Um, like, what stands out in this? I love all the kids' toys they have in their house, like when they're trying to engineer a way to get this ball back. Well, yeah, like the fucking erector set and shit. The connect, what is it they have? Erector set? Uh, yeah, erector sets, yeah. I was like, I don't know what exactly, because that's obviously a 60s version of whatever is available. So it's like... And those are very popular, right? I mean, that was like a whole style of like childhood engineering. And yeah, they I love plastic ones that were called Connects when I was a kid as my most popular version of that. Very similar to that, yeah. But they were like plastic and bright colored and somewhere mm-hmm. between that metal shit and Legos. Yes. Basically. I never had any because I was like, all that shit that was just fucking asking to get lost and be a mess and break apart. Our parents didn't buy because they fucking knew better. And I didn't really give too much of a shit about it anyway. So as long as they didn't buy it for me. No, if they bought it, I probably would have played with it. But They do have just a tiny bit of foreshadowing in there that, like, if you're not paying attention to, like, when I was watching for notes today, I noticed at the beginning, like, when the ball flies out of the little setup he's got in his room and smacks his mom in the face, when he's talking about the biggest pickle of their summer or whatever, or their lives or whatever, that kind of foreskinning it, you know? <laughs> I was about to say, when you say foreshadowing... You always think of foreskin? I, I want to say foreskin shadowing. <laughs> and then you said pickle, and I was like, <laughs> penis. Ding dongs. What a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beautiful. You too, uh, you too see the wolf man in the theater. Uh, so yeah, the, the dog chase scene's pretty badass with fucking Wipeout playing. Mm-hmm. Fucking iconic. Also, just in general, the soundtrack to this movie, I'm pretty sure Tequila plays at the carnival, right? Mm-hmm. And that shit rules. And then they also have... Uh, What's that song called? Uh, Green, Green Onions. Or Green something? Onions. Yeah, I love. Doom, doom, da, doom, da, da, doom, doom, da, na, na, na. And it's all like timely music for the movie when it yeah. takes place for that, which works very well. I have all that shit in playlists. It's iconic as fuck too because yeah. of that. Like, it makes me the, think of this. You hear those songs and you immediately think of those scenes in the movie. I learned how to play that on keyboard. Just that riff, the doom, doom, da, na, 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 na. And since this one actually has the word tequila in it, it sticks out with me a little bit more than Ninja Turtles where they're like, ninjutsu, because you got the real tequila in there. Yeah. And that's when they're yakking everywhere, so it's like they almost got... Although I've seen Ninja Turtles a little bit more, yeah, Yeah. so I do every time I hear that song want to scream out ninjutsu instead of tequila, so that's a thing. Hmm. So I like how, uh, as we were talking about Wipeout, he has this whole fucking scene where he's running from the dog and this scene mm-hmm. is shot really well and then I lo- like I said I, I love the scene the wolf man in there in the theater that's pretty cool that whole dog chase scene is amazing because Benny like you just see like how iconic that character is and how good natured he is he's like no I'm gonna do this for you I, I almost expected, expected him to like confess his love to Smalls and like mm-hmm. grab him by the back of the neck and, and then you see Hercules in there plant a soft kiss on his face something weird like that like I mean, they make kids kiss in movies, so it's not like I'm weird for saying that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm just saying, he's like, I will die for you. I'll die for (laughs) your ball. (laughs) God. (laughs) You are fucking high. Benny and the Jet. (laughs) Isn't that ironic, don't you think? Oh, God. This is a whole plot about how these children are actually gay for each other. And actually, that makes sense because they end up together at the end. Those two do, actually, yeah. Yeah. And you've seen the mustache that Benny the Jet Rodriguez has. Yeah. True. No fucking arguing that. Mm -mm. It's just like Freddie Mercury's. It is. It's bushy. (sighs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) This is a wacky fucking episode. So let's talk about the most important piece of this whole movie. Dennis Leary's penis. No. Smalls rescuing Hercules. He's like, he's hurt. He's hurt. Decides to be the hero that even though the dog was the supposed enemy, even though it's really Squints being a fucking asshole. (laughs) Oh, oh, this has been such a bad episode. (laughs) (laughs) No, Squints is like the trash human in this, and then Smalls has Benny help him let the dog out, and then obviously you get James Earl Jones is the fucking neighbor back there man like yeah. that dude's fucking amazing that's one of his greatest roles there i think yeah he's just so enthusiastic way better about than darth it. vader yeah 
because he only did the voice of Darth Vader. And this, you actually see him being him and mm -hmm. his genuine, his genuine self. Nubian God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't pull off and see some white, decrepit old man. <laughs> They're trying to tell us that deep down we all wants to be white. <laughs> uh, That's chasing Amy, if you don't know. Yeah, if you're not aware of that, check that one out. Because otherwise, Alec is really probably crossed a few lines for you i've, pro I've crossed way too many <laughs> lines tonight in general so again apologies in advance in uh, advance like halfway through now <laughs> i already apologize after about everything weird that i said tonight so it's just like i can't help but noticing the homo erotica in this movie mm, that's fine <sighs> so yeah this is like a really bad stand-up comedy routine from like 2007 is what it is in here like it just really kind of. Like, it really just felt like we're like, hey, let's act like we're doing Bob Saget stand up, but while we talk about the movie Stand by Me, <laughs> if you see that thing, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking shoot it because it is not real. <laughs> uh, uh, if you haven't watched that in a while, go back. I, it has it, not aged well. No, not at all. <laughs> it's fucking bad. Like I thought it was hilarious when it came out, and then it's you're talking like, about like fucking Kimmy Gibbler and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, Jesus. There's a reason he never did another fucking foul stand-up like that, because people are like, whoa. <laughs> He's, like, laughing at himself. He sings a song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Came out when I was, like, 16 or 17, and I thought I was fucking hilarious then. I was like, oh, Bob Saget. It's the guy who I know from Full House, and he's saying naughty things. Now you look and you're like, oh, shit. Oh. You're like, your fucking manager let you do this? <laughs> <laughs> what manager? <laughs> well, and then they made the Full House follow-up, so... But I don't think he had uh, knocked up Kimmy Gibbler in the series, so... <sighs> yeah, I hope not. So, he gives him a... He's like, oh, that ball? And he fucking just is like, here, here's a sign by the whole fucking team and shit. Yeah. 19... I don't know what year it was. What is it, 1927? Whoever the fuck's. Mm -hmm. New York Yankees World Series team. Yeah. <laughs> I know what they're called, the Yankees. <laughs> pin Crickets. drops. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't have a sound effect for that, but so clear you could hear the pin drop. I do have a uh, remember those old Candace Bergman or the other name, old Sprint ads. You can so clear you can hear the pin drop. Yeah, yeah, we having fun or what? <laughs> uh, if that's what you call it, then yes, yes, we're having a blast. So obviously they end up together. They're married at the end, and it shows um Smalls and Benny in the jet. Living together in their mansion. Um, <laughs> Benny, now you're just completely off the track. Benny is... No, he works as a baseball player for uh, the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. uh, too bad it's not the Yankees. <laughs> well, and Smalls is just the... Uh, He's the play announcer. Play announcer, yeah. So. so he spends a lot of time in front of a microphone, just like us. I'm not saying we're the same guy, but we're the same guy. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if that didn't get weird for you enough, <laughs> that was not how I expected that to go at all. Oh, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? What was your day like? Do you want me to write you a book? <laughs> well, maybe. Talk to my therapist. I am your therapist. I am the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! All right, let's move along because that really. Oh Jesus! Oh God! Oh Oh Jesus! God! Oh Mary, Mother of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> well, that was exciting. Let's go to uh, well, another dick joke. Pitch a summer summer tent pole. Yeah, pitch in a summer tent pole, and this one is pitch your versus movie. Versus, versus, versus movie. Versatile. So what do you got? What's the title of your movie? Well, my favorite one is Ash versus Freddy Krueger. There's more than one of these, you know. You just have to. Are yeah. you done with that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't... <laughs> it's too much. It's just too much. I'm fucking ripped, people. And I'm sorry I keep mentioning it, but I'm just like, I can't help it. Because I'm just like, every five minutes... I realize how stoned I am again. Mm-hmm. No, so for my Versus movie, it's Ash versus Freddy Krueger, directed by Sam Raimi. Um, 
obviously... You Fred, can't see this, can you? <laughs> Freddy Krueger gets the Necronomicon and is doing all sorts of shit to try to revive himself from hell. And I'm going to fuck this book in the mouth. He does. Because it has one. Because it looks like it's made out of me. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, one of the scenes in this movie would be Freddy making a Necronomicon replica with himself by cutting his own skin off and, like, making a book and binding it. Or maybe, like, reading it and calling it trash and be like, this book's bullshit. I can write a better one. And rips the skin <laughs> off and binds it to a book. He'd have to have a joke about how he opens it up and is like... Oh, this is a lovely bedtime story. Yeah. No, the one-liners alone for this, this would be fucking hilarious just because... They would banter really well. Yes, their banter back and forth would be amazing. And I would really want Freddy to be a human for a significant portion of this. You know... As a deadite, so he's going back and forth between... It's not me, I'm not a child molester or whatever, and then like going fucking crazy demon. Ash has to make some references about uh, Freddy Krueger's dick. He's like, so are you like that all over? (laughs) Yeah. You uh, You know what I mean. Down there. So did you uh, stay on the grill a little too long downstairs, too? <laughs> cool at Oscar Mayer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, that's probably one of the jokes that he may have. It's great, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that he'd have to be alive for part of the movie and like have the Deadites, or working with the Deadites to do that. I didn't get too into the plot, because honestly, as long as those two are equipping back and forth and fighting and shit, I really don't give a fuck what the end goal of this movie is, besides yeah. demons doing shit with books. That was one of my ideas. I've got several here. All right, well, I'll go to my next, my first one, because I also have two. I I almost did a third one, but I didn't. So this uh, second one, or the first one, is titled Michael vs. Jason, directed by Sam Raimi. Hmm. Written by Sam Raimi and Ted Raimi. Okay. The cast is Paul Rudd as Tommy Doyle. Oh. Back from... uh, which Halloween movie is he in? Was it like five? Five or something, maybe? Curse of Michael Myers, I think. Something and that one has like two weird versions made of it. Like there's different edits. Yeah. Um. So basically, he's in Haddonfield, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, Michael comes back. But also, as a callback to uh, Friday the 13th Part 2, Jason is uh, chilling by Camp Crystal Lake, and he has Freddy's head. Freddy's still alive, but he just stores it on his shelf and he, you know, fucking talks shit to Jason and shit. Because that's where the last movie left off. This is a sequel to Freddy vs. Jason, by the way. Oh, good. Even better. But we do put Kane Hodder back in the role of Jason for this one. Um, I don't know who plays Michael Myers. Maybe the guy who does it now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> kind of irrelevant, I guess. Yeah. Um, There's not exactly a lot of dialogue, so as long as you're going to walk menacingly and you're giant, it yeah. works. So Tommy f- hears about the Freddy vs. Jason shit because it's all over the news or something. And he reads about it and uh, figures a way to try to get Jason to Haddonfield to take out Michael in some form or fashion. <laughs> and then uh, the second act, somehow f- Freddy uh, comes back too. So he's into the mix, sort of like the old 50s monster movies where you get a bunch of monsters in the same movie. Yeah, for sure. So Freddy travels to Haddonfield just to fuck up Jason and get revenge. Um, Can I add one thing, though? I would really love to see Jason get beheaded and then Freddy take over Jason's body and have his head fucking, like, stuck on top of it. (laughs) Just so we can control it. Maybe that can happen for a minute. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a long sequence, but just long enough to cause some carnage, because I think that's fucking absurd. (laughs) That's what that movie needs. Um... I think they're going to be fighting in a, uh, like a trailer park. And then, uh, Freddy is going to be bashed into a trailer by Jason and, uh, finds a chainsaw, starts using it on Jason before is he is hit with a shotgun blast from Ash, who was, that was his, uh, trailer. Something dumb like this. It doesn't even have to make much fucking sense. No, it doesn't. If it's a versus Somebody movie, else yeah. can rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to give you the basic scenes I want to see, and you tell me a story around that. Yeah, pretty much. And then um, that'll have something to do with the Necronomicon or something there. That's why they're there. To Maybe Tommy Doyle's there looking for the Necronomicon so he can put fucking Jason back to rest because a lot of people think he's a dead-eyed anyway. Hmm. Um, basically, Freddy... Uh, Kills Jason, 
Michael Myers thinks he kills Freddy. And uh, I don't know. That's about that one. Oh, well, what's Ash do with everybody then? Ash definitely murders uh, Michael Myers. <laughs> and then banishes Freddy with the book. Okay, that's fair. There you go. So my other take, I wanted to do something that wasn't so obvious. So I was thinking, like, what's a great villain that doesn't get enough credit? Um, Wait, let me guess. Jay Leno. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's already a fucking crime against humanity for his stealing Conan show again. And uh, also for wearing the Canadian tuxedo. I hate that, man. I'm Johnny looking... Bartlett from Frighteners, the serial killer. I would love to see him go against Chucky. Since Johnny Bartlett, the serial killer, played by Jake Busey, uh, is pretending to be death and fooling people. And then the Chucky doll, you know, Chucky would just get fucking pissed because, you know, that's his thing. He's a fucking serial killer. And like, how's this guy got to come back and do shit while he's dead? And... Chucky just has to be some plastic doll, so there's a lot of fucking envy going on back and forth there. Huh. And Chucky's trying to make it look like it's this other death thing, you know, that's doing all these killings when... And so it'd just be a fucking slaughter of a movie. They're basically seeing who can compete to kill the most. Huh. And then obviously since he's supposedly death in there, you'd have to have a fucking William Sadler cameo. Huh. Even though he wouldn't be death in this movie, he would get killed by death in this movie. Because I can see it. Because why not? And that's uh, it's pretty simple, but, you know. Uh, my other one is something that should definitely, could definitely have happened. But uh, Chucky versus Leprechaun. Chucky gets a hold of the Leprechaun's gold at some point, and is like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck yeah, I'm rich, bitch. And he's like hanging out with Tiffany, so you get both Tiffany and Chucky in there. And then uh, Leprechaun obviously comes after them for his fucking gold, and they have to battle the Leprechaun. And obviously they, both of these characters have like smoked weed and done all sorts of weird sexual shit in film, so mm -hmm. they're very much parallels of each other. They yes. both have a lot of movies, and half of them were direct-to-video. I already see the direct-to-video marketing that would be like at an old, VH, uh, you know, an old tape rental store. And it would be like a picture of them two against like a police lineup and says like, how do you measure up? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston comes back from Leprechaun. Yeah. Mark Holton also. Alex Vincent from Child's Play. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiffany would kill the Leprechaun. Supposedly. Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer Aniston would kill Tiffany, supposedly. Chucky would kill Jennifer, for real. <laughs> <laughs> And then he would drag away the corpse of uh, Tiffany. And then, uh, I don't know, you'd have some sort of thing where the, the leprechaun's not actually dead. You'd hear him do the, the laughing, just like the yeah. Freddy wink at the end of Freddy vs. Jason. Mm -hmm. I thought of like doing one with like Pumpkinhead and somebody. I thought of even just like Godzilla There's vs. Stay Puffed. <laughs> you know, like yeah. something weird. Yeah, I was like, oh, the Poltergeist ghost versus like Slimer, or well, I was thinking the Ghostbusters the versus Poltergeist too at one yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Ghostbusters versus The Exorcist. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't really ring a bell, so no, it doesn't sound good. Ghostbusters versus Poltergeists would be a way more entertaining, just because they're very similar in yeah how they actually played out, and just some of the scenes there are very parallel. So. Let us know in the comments or on social media what you uh, would do for a Versus movie. We need some silly shit out there. And uh, during this conversation, Alec and I were also reminded that RoboCop versus The Terminator exists. It's a comic book and it's a video game. So if you've got some time and money to kill, go pick that up and treat yourself to some fun entertainment. All right. I'm going to do something real quick for you. Just because we have time and I'm thinking about something that's been pissing me off lately. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fuck. <laughs>
You know what really fucking pissed me off these last few days and weeks? A month? Or even a year? I moved into this fucking apartment recently. And um, laundry has been very much a source of frustration. <sighs> Let me take a breath there. Um, I can't fucking do my laundry. There are so many fucking weird steps and requirements for me to get my goddamn clothes in a washer and a dryer right now that it makes me want to... Um, all the things I was about to say would be very terrible and and um, would put me on some sort of watch list. <laughs> so I refuse to say them because that's how pissed off I am. Um, you know there's a laundromat not too far from here. That The thought of going to a laundromat pisses me off. I'm 30 years old. I don't even go into a goddamn laundromat. I already have to spend money on each fucking load already. Anybody fucking <laughs> load, you know what I'm saying? This fucking load. Um... Sorry to laugh. Here's my, here's the real frustration, because you're just sitting there going like, why can't he do his laundry? I don't fucking know what he's talking about. He's just bitching and complaining. Well, yeah, you're goddamn right I am. But here's the thing. I live in one building. There's another building across the street that way. I'm saying that way. It doesn't make any fucking difference. But it doesn't matter. Way, um, it's over there, and I have to walk over there. That's fine. It doesn't piss me off that much. It's inconvenient, but hey. If I can do my laundry, I can do my laundry, but I can't. So I go over there because they say, oh, yeah, you can just walk in there and use your card and go over there and you stick your card in and it's like, nope, the not work because what they don't tell you is that you have to get a pre-coded, pre, pre-loaded card and when the machine to load the card is in the office gym. So... I'm like, okay, I can't use these till I get the preloaded card. I go to the gym to get the pre-fucking-loaded card. There's a little machine on the wall. It has a red button. It's green. It's round. It says push to start. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm legit, though. Like, you, you, there's a button. There's one button on the machine, and it says push for new card. And so I go over there with my card. Your debit card? Yes. Your banking card. Okay. And you cannot... You can't use you a card can't to use buy a card. card. You have to use cash and to load it. It doesn't accept $1 bills. You can only use a $5 bill to buy the card. Otherwise, you're fucked. So you have to use a $5 bill, which I finally got one. But now every time I go over there and try to hit the button and try to put the $5 bill in, it just says, take new card, and it doesn't take the f- money. So I'm like... But anyway, like I said, it only takes a $5 bill for that. The, the reason these machines really piss me off is because they are basically preying on fucking poor people to spend more money. They're like, oh, fucking cough it up. So every time you, you know, say you misplaced your card to do your laundry because you need a fucking card to do that, uh, you're fucked. You got to spend another $5 and you have to get a $5 bill. You have to get a $5 bill to buy a $5 card that can you reload? You can reload, but here's the thing. The laundry machines cost like three dollars and seventy five cents. And then like some they're just weird, obscure amounts of money. So if you it, and you can only load on with fives, tens, and twenties. So say you put ten dollars in, three dollars and seventy five cent load. So you'd have to figure out a mathematical you, equation yes, to figure out exactly how to use all your money correctly. And you can never use all of your money on the card at that point. So they will always have some of your money and they're just sitting there laughing with it, like <laughs> look at my bank. Look at my fucking dick in my hand with all these extra quarters I have. <laughs> and that, children, is why I hate capitalism. Um, so just a little lesson for you. Fuck those machines and fuck those companies. If you're listening to this company that uh, does this, I hate you. And, um, yeah. Well, it's fucking absurd. Fuck it's 2021. You know someone's got an app that you can fucking prepay for your laundry on and just tap to pay. All right. they have to do is upgrade the wa- the laundry machines. Uh, there should also be not fucking having to load a pre fucking thing for your machine. The machine you could easily have a machine that takes fucking debit cards mm-hmm. in this day and age. If I can buy a fucking three dollar Coca Cola at a goddamn vending machine, why can't you have that? On I your could do that five years ago. Machine? Yeah, you could. 
uh, like I said, it's just another way to fuck me. So, that's what's pissing me off this week. A uh, little rant for you. A little rant. I feel like I need something now. I need another blunt. <laughs> you got upset there. It's all right. My washing machine died, so I bought one of those little hand crank washing machines. So do washing machines. And so I've been uh been doing laundry the old school way. Been doing uh <laughs> you're too old to get up uh, laundry. So uh, we're gonna close the episode out with Twin Peaks. <laughs> We now return to the real Ghostbusters. Diane, 11.30 a.m., February 24th. Entering the town of Twin Peaks. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Bill Murray's the funniest man on the planet. Episode by episode. Twin Peaks, season two, episode 13. Yeah. It's, it's, it's titled Checkmate, but you know, the titles weren't there for air, so... They were added later, so the titles don't really matter to me. Yeah, no, and I don't know if they actually titled the scripts or the episodes, or if that was just whatever, right, you know? <sighs> it's like Lynch would say, Ah, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Uh, I don't even have that available right here. It's here somewhere. Yeah, it's fine. We all know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you know us, you know Lynch. Who gives a fucking shit about fuck? Very good. Fucking Major Briggs, man. He comes back at the end of the last episode, and then in this episode, he's like, oh, it feels like it was I was gone much shorter. Yeah. So um, that was pretty good. He's one of my favorite characters, so just seeing his story arc here is really some of my favorite stuff of this show. Yeah, for sure. He's he's fascinating. Um, and then essentially, he's with Harry, and he's with Cooper, and they're basically having a discussion about what the fuck happened. Yeah. Talking about the White Lodge and shit. Yeah, he says... They eventually he, get him to talk about his secret shit, and he's like, well, you're no Project Blue Book. Yeah. Of course, the UFO hunting thing. Well, you know, they still exist in some capacity, basically. It's not yeah. exactly what he says. But and as, as he's trying to tell Cooper and Harry exactly what the fuck's going on, that they're searching for the White Lodge, um, obviously then the military comes in and, you know, they come and pick him up. And then Harry tries to resist that bullshit. He's like, fuck you, man, you're not taking my boy here. And, you know, Major Bray's like, it's okay, gentlemen basically fucking all calm and collected like Morgan yeah. Freeman walks out of the fucking room like a boss. Yep. He ain't scared. But he's did he did let some information slip, so. Yeah. Uh, it's fascinating. Um he says he's looking at the table there and he says, "Is this meant for the soul? My soul?" Which is just so vague and creepy and weird. And if you know, there's something else about a table in Twin Peaks that I think it has to be referencing. And it's very interesting and weird. And we'll get there when we get there, but... Yeah, there's that's the thing with this, this show and this series, is there's just so much fucking abstract stuff going on that, like, it really throws you off at first. You're like, what the fuck does that mean? And yeah. you can rewatch this series over and over and over and really get down to the deeper layers of yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I've watched this series in full, like, at least four times. So it's like, I'm still seeing shit I'd... Yeah, you're just able to catch things that make sense because you know what happens gathering later. Gathering all the whole story and everything. There's so much shit going on always. Um, Denise is in this one again. She's getting uh, Ernie ready to set up to do the buy. Mm-hmm. Denise is going to play the uh, agent. Mm-hmm. Or the buyer, not the agent. I hate the little Nikki storyline. Yeah. Just makes me want to Photoshop in little Nicky from little Nicky. That's the whole... chickens are fucking shit. Well, the whole little Nicky thing is like, they think he's the devil, and you're like, okay, on a series that's got some abstract paranormal... Well, no, I mean, I think it's just because they're idiots. Yes, I know, I get that. But the fact that they try to shoehorn that in there and, like, make it be a thing, like, I don't really give a fuck about that storyline anymore. It's one of those subplots that no one cares about. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just... Like many of the other subplots we visit in this episode. Yeah. There's several of them you can fucking cut right out. Um, Ed's at the diner and he's like, I need to talk to you to Norma and shit. Yep. Um, Bobby and Shelly are kind of arguing over fucking Leo's dumbass. Yeah. And she's got Leo's blood all over herself at one point in time. And I don't, they don't really explain how that happened, but yeah, something that Bobby going. didn't, Bobby didn't take care of him or something, so... Mm. Interesting. I was cleaning while I watched this one today. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I've had a busy fucking week. Well, and Bobby is trying to go work for Ben, and Ben's yeah. clearly off the fucking deep end. He thinks he's Robert E. Lee running the Which, war. Which, this is my favorite of the subplots that are shitty. Oh, it's so... it's fucking hilarious to see him thinking he's in the war, and how what lengths they end up going to in this subplot. For well, him. it's it's hilarious just because the fact that he's like got this whole like hills and battles and stuff strewn about the floor of this place and he's like getting down deep into it and you he know he fucking snapped man yeah he's off the deep end um the James and Evelyn subplot is uh horse shit and I she does eventually ask him to kill her husband and you're like this literally feels like Wayne's World 2 referenced this I'm sure they did I mean it's, it's so like a kind absurd. of a tropey yes. plot but like the Wayne's World one seems very much that also it's very similar for the right time right so yeah because wayne's world 2 was 93 Mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's that's my least favorite subplot right james is just basically fixes the car and like they wind up hooking up another fucking shit five and, head and then she's got a black eye after she gets her ass beat but then at the same time like it makes it look like he the her husband knows she slept with james and stuff so they're like Somehow they're in an open relationship, but they're all still very abusive. It's fucking just one of those weird things that's like, that's the part of the show that's really trying to be soap opery, and you don't need it at all. It doesn't do anything for anybody besides waste time and space. Yeah. Um, that whole subplot is very stereotypical. It goes, I don't know, it may even be a commentary on that type of a plot, because that's how deep this Twin Peaks shit goes sometimes. But Yeah, um, but Norma and Ed... Like, they're trying to fuck. Yeah, they're trying to hook back up, right? And then, of course, what's her name? Her Norma's husband, like, sees that as he's got his little dice and, like, puts that in there as he sees yeah. their conversation. Hank's a fucking weirdo. Yeah, he is. So. And, um, then Nadine whoops his ass, though. And that rules. That's a good fucking scene. Like, that makes up for all the Nadine scenes in there because to me that's like, what i'm saying i like her subplot more than it's just in it's wackier and it's weirder and, and it just works so much better than like the james and evelyn shit well the payoff you get when she's there to like take that over and then does she snap back into reality at that point when she realizes like that's ed or what is that no she she knows ed okay because so. they were they sort of dated in high school in reality yeah so did he and normal though so yeah so that's the thing like you didn't know if she's like snapping back in because she kind of holds him after that whole fight well yeah so that that's a good a plot though because like you know you obviously see that Nadine is a fucking badass like at everything she's doing and like she's just like some fucking monster of a human. Yep. So when she picked him up and fucking just threw him, I was like, "Fuck yeah, kick his ass, <laughs> kick his ass, sea bass." <laughs> yep. Cooper gets deputized, and I've been waiting to say that on the show because I love it. Yeah, it was badass. He's like, "Hey, you you know you've earned it. You, you've earned it." Yeah, that was good. Um. Because you kind of forget that, you know, Dale's not really actively an active agent at this point in time. Because yeah, they don't he's make just in street clothes and yeah. he's like chilling. He's like, I'm in my flannel and I'm fucking mountain folk now. Now, it is funny when Denise sees him kiss. That's Audrey, right? That wasn't the last episode. Was that? Oh, okay, I, I finished up. I rewatched the end of that one before I got into this one. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that was the last one. Okay, so. At the very end. Yeah, and, uh, but Denise comes through in this one, because then you get to the whole fucking, um... The bottom under scene? Yeah, the undercover scene, right, right, where they're trying to, um, bust what's-his-name, and so he's like, I'm sweaty, and he just talks about it all, and then you fucking see the mic short, gets fucking crazy, like, that's actually yeah. pretty well done, I like that, so... That's one of the more interesting sequences of the, this episode, for sure. The best part, though, is when fucking Denise comes in and saves the day at the end. That's fucking so good. Mm -hmm. She comes in, like, fucking pulls up her skirt a little bit, and fucking Dale grabs the fucking gun and takes out John. Yep. Denise is fucking... She comes in as a VIP. badass, yeah. And she's like, oh, it's not even my idea. That was Harry's idea. And he's like, yeah. But they still fucking pulled it off, and it made sense, so... Really well done, and like David Duchovny is so good in that role. Like he just fucking pulls it off to a T. You don't even fucking mm -hmm. question him or anything. Like even having seen the X Files and knowing so much other David Duchovny's work in this role, like you just truly feel like that's exactly that's someone I want to fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that's <nice. laughs> so. Yeah, definitely. You just want to know what's under that skirt. Well, you put your panties on one leg at a time too, so. and uh, whether it. <laughs> we won't go there. Yeah. 
the uh, power outage at the end gets a little weird because then we get to see that our boy comes out of his coma. Hmm. Uh, and so he's kind of standing there, and we don't really, that obviously is just the foreshadowing at the end of the episode, saying, like, some shit's coming next time. Oh, yeah. So. We only have, like, we're in the ten we're in or so the, episodes left of this season. Yeah, we're in the kind of the, the second half of the stretch here, so. Yeah, and then we will be doing the return as well. Oh, so. fuck yeah, you have to. You can't go this far or not. Nope. So. I can't wait to do that one. That one's fucked up, too. Yeah. Um... That whole standoff scene, though, I love that whole sequence. Yeah. And then you forget that Harry's, like, with uh, what's-her-name, and she's, like, dressed as the maid and, and all that other stuff. There's a, there's so many things crammed into this episode that if it's a subplot, it's easy to overlook, like, the main story that's going on. Yeah. Because I remember I looked over at one point, and it was fucking Harry and... What's-her-face? Josie. Yeah, and then the shit. other big piece that's going on throughout this is that Dale is putting the uh, chess plays into the newspaper. Yeah. And that's all going on. So then at the very end of the episode, after you see that Leo is out of his coma staring Shelly down, then you see that's at the police office again or in the sheriff's office. And you see uh, the room's dark. I can't really tell exactly what room it was in, but you see that this corpse is pointing at the chess board to show the move that was just made. Yeah. And so Dale's obviously a little, little freaked out by it at the end, so... And then another piece that we didn't talk about earlier on this that's significant just because it's the owl is that's one thing Major Briggs says. He's like, I don't really remember much besides this giant owl. And he yeah. described it as being very big, right? And obviously when you see it, it's hard to tell the context of the size because of the way they frame it. So That's hard to tell the context of the size. Hold on. Let me rub it a little. A bit bigger. <laughs> uh, so uh. That, that was a great episode, though. I mean, there's some good stuff going on there. Nadine kicking Hank's ass is a highlight. Fucking Denise saving the day is a highlight. There's mm-hmm. really good stuff in there. Yes. I would love to see a super cut of this show where you cut out some of these stupid subplots and just see how much more fucking streamlined it is. Hmm. I so. don't know. There's something whimsical about having to watch them too, though. It makes yeah. me laugh. But I like the bad... Like I said, I like this Nadine subplot and the yeah, no, Civil, that one, Civil would, War Ben is great too to me. I would leave that. I would leave those two in there, right? But the whole James subplot, I don't really fucking care for at all. Just and I hate the little Nikki one as well. I, yeah. I like... Andy and Lucy being at odds, but I really fucking hate um, Dick Tremaine. He's yeah. a fucking skeet talent. He's he so just, annoying to me. That's just a great job on the actor, though, because yeah. he's playing such a fucking troll that you fucking hate him for just being a trash human. Yeah, I just hate him enough that I don't even like to watch to hate him. You know yes, what I mean? I don't exactly. like to hate him. I just hate him. You just hate him. So Plain old hate. Uh, that was episode 72. So if you're not subscribed to our YouTube, check it out, please. We've got lots of great content on there, extra videos all the time. Yeah. You can see our pretty faces. Uh, we've got some other cool stuff coming up soon, so. Yeah, we're going to have lots of uh, cool videos. And make sure you jump on to our Etsy page, buy some of those stickers up we have available. Shirts are available as well. Uh, $5 of the Killer Replica t-shirt will go to Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. And $1 of the Killer Replica stickers is going to be donated to Children's Mercy Kansas City. So uh, get out there, support the show, do that, support the community as well. I just really wanted to have a way to give back and, you know, do something nice considering we're fucking so foul all the time. Like, we may as well do something nice for the world, and I think that's our little way of doing it. So, yeah. We'll talk to you soon, and I uh, hope everyone has an excellent week. These are my dinner guests, the Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests, Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests, the Frog Brothers. Shut this off. Shut these all off.